60 years ago on October 11, 1961, at the Semipalatinsk test site for the first time in the USSR conducted nuclear tests by underground explosion. In all, there were more than 300 such tests during the operation of the test site. This is a large and interesting video that will consist of several parts. This is the first part. Let's begin. Moving the tests underground was seen as a show of humanity to the local population suffering from surface and atmospheric explosions. However, even more than 30 years after the closure of the landfill, the inhabitants of the former Soviet Union are experiencing the consequences of radiation contamination. On October 11, 1961, the first mine added equipped in the low mountain massif of Dijalin in the very northeast of Kazakhstan experienced a terrible explosion. Earthquake shocks were felt dozens of kilometers from the epicenter. Birds and animals scattered in fright. Not privy to the mystery of the Soviet nuclear project, rare residents of this corner of Siberia stood still in bewilderment, really an earthquake? The surface of the mountain rose by four meters. A huge cloud of dust formed above it. But the radioactive products and the fireball did not come out of the ground. After the explosion, dosimetrists entered the attic. They saw that the instrument boxes were intact. The specialists did not detect any radioactive contamination. The test was successful, prompting scientists to continue underground nuclear explosions. It seemed that a way out of the situation how to continue the experiments without putting people's lives at risk had finally been found. The power of the first underground nuclear explosion in Soviet history was 20 kilotons. The power of the first underground explosion in the USSR was 20 kilotons. The news from the Semipalatinsk test site, STS, overjoyed first secretary of the Soviet Communist Party's Central Committee Nikita Khrushchev who wanted to surpass America on all fronts. Moreover, the Americans were the first in history to conduct underground nuclear explosions back in 1957. Actually, the Soviet government in 1958 declared a unilateral halt to all testing and intended to hold on to that line as long as the United States and Britain did. However, in September 1961, at the height of the Berlin crisis, the Soviet Union was the first to break its voluntary moratorium. At the same time, the country was completing the development of the world's most powerful thermonuclear bomb. Launched from an airplane over Novaya Zemlya on October 30, 1961, it was called the Tsar Bomba. And abroad it was nicknamed, at Khrushchev's suggestion, the Kuzkin Mother. Sixty years ago the Soviet Union was winning victory after victory in the nuclear arms race. And at the same time the number of people affected by radiation was growing. Many of them learned only years later that they were doomed. Beria and dead rabbits. Khrushchev only reaped the fruits of the work of the best Soviet scientists led by Igor Kurchatov, skillfully converting them into political points. The basis of the atomic project of the USSR was laid by his main opponent Lavrenty Beria. Kurchatov succinctly described his role in the emergence of nuclear weapons in the Union, if it wasn't for him, there would be no bomb. In the center of Semei, former Semipalatinsk, and now stands a three-story Stalinist, which during his visits to the site stopped the Kremlin's little grey cardinal. There is even a carbine in the entrance, to which the guard dog was tied and next to it there was a guard booth. The closer the day of the first test came, the more often the curator from Moscow came to Semipalatinsk dash all tortured, sleepless, with bags under his eyes, in a ragged cape. It was rumored that due to his busy schedule and fatigue he which was rare for him did not pay attention to local girls. The Soviet leadership was concerned about eliminating America's monopoly on nuclear weapons after the U.S. dropped two bombs on Japanese cities in August 1945. While the best minds of the country were working on the creation of the first atomic charge in a specially organized nuclear center, 170 kilometers west of Semipalatinsk they prepared a testing ground, up to. The site was chosen according to several criteria, 
a vast and virtually uninhabited area without agricultural land was required. According to initial calculations, the diameter of the required area had to be at least 200 kilometers and have at least some roads nearby, as well as the possibility to build a runway for transport planes. The most suitable site for the nuclear test site turned out to be the Prirtish waterless steppe with rare abandoned and dried up wells. To the southwest were low mountains, to the east was the valley of the Chagan River, and salty shallow lakes that dried up in summer, which used to be the bottom of an ancient sea. On this plane in 1947 the Soviet Union began one of the most ambitious construction projects in its history. In the first winter about 9,000 military builders were involved in the work. For almost two years, soldiers and officers lived in tents and dugouts and received frostbite, which led to amputation of fingers and toes. At the same time 60 kilometers from the range began the construction of a residential and administrative center now the city of Kerchetov in the East Kazakhstan region of Kazakhstan. The central headquarters of the Semipalatinsk test site was located there. Preparation for the tests began long before the development of the first nuclear charge was completed and was carried out with great care since it was necessary to obtain the maximum amount of information about the processes occurring during the explosion of the projectile and about the resulting damaging factors. In addition, it was necessary to exclude any failures and errors in recording the parameters of the explosion. In total during preparation of the first test in 14 sectors of the experimental field at various distances from a nuclear charge have been established 53 various planes. 32 units of armored vehicles, and also placed various property of different kinds and kinds of Army's Navy, communications, chemical, engineering, rear and so on. For medical and biological research 1538 animals were exposed, including 417 rabbits, more than 170 sheep and goats, 64 piglets, 129 dogs, 375 guinea pigs, 380 white mice and rats. The experimental field was guarded by a special battalion of four companies. Twelve outposts were located around the perimeter of the field, with a permanent post near each of them. In the daytime, security was provided by two observation towers with telephone lines and field telephones. At night, paired patrols on both sides of the outposts would go out to the border with the neighboring outpost and exchange tokens there with the other patrol, closely observing the wire fence. Near the outposts there was a circular defense with full-length trenches dug. The first Soviet nuclear explosion was detonated at 7 a.m. on August 29, 1949. The power of the bomb was more than 20 kilotons. A blindingly bright flash illuminated the sleepy, almost already autumnal steppe. Thirty seconds later, the shock wave approached the command post. Immediately after the explosion 368 animals were killed, and the survivors were taken to the vivarium on the same day to monitor their condition. Combat vehicles within a radius of 500 to 550 meters were mangled and overturned. The tanks were lying on their sides with their turrets torn off. True, the T-34 500 meters away from the explosion site received only minor damage. A reinforced concrete building with an overhead crane for charge assembly also survived. Eleven administrative districts of the Altai territory were covered by the radioactive trace of the explosion. This was the first part of the video. Links to other parts of the video will be in the attached commentary. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Write in the comments about what else interesting you can tell about this video. See you in the new video.